Hi, Miss Kay's class. My name's Sam, and I'm going to talk to you about blacksmithing today. So let's talk a little bit about the history of blacksmithing. What is blacksmithing? Well, the word blacksmithing comes from black, referring to the black metal that we're working, and smith coming from the word smite, or to strike. Basically what it means is that we're hitting black metal. So was there other types of smithing? Absolutely. Before that we had copper smithing, and then we moved into the Bronze Age, into the Iron Age, where blacksmithing came around. After that, we got onto steel, and after steel, we have more advanced metals like stainless and titanium and all other sorts of things. So, blacksmithing was a trade that was used commonly to produce any sort of metal object that the society needed, really up until about the 1920s, when we ran into the Industrial Revolution. Once we started doing that, we learned a whole bunch of different machining operations and other ways to mass produce things. Um, and blacksmithing as a trade sort of died down. Now there were always still one or two, but it wasn't as popular because it wasn't needed due to the modern manufacturing techniques that we had. In about the 1970s and 1980s, people started realizing that it could also be a really fun hobby and also a great form of artistry. And there became kind of a blacksmith's revitalization that's really grown up a lot here in recent days uh, due to the popularization through YouTube channels and through popular TV shows. A lot of people have gotten back into it as a as a hobby and as a form of expressing themselves artistically. All right, we talked a little bit about history. Now let's talk about the tools that you need. We're gonna start with the safety equipment because it's not gonna be any fun if you're getting injured. So the most important thing is gonna be wearing your safety glasses. The reason you need safety glasses is because something called scale, which is really just rust formed under heat and pressure, comes flying off of the steel when you're striking it. Now if you get that into your eyes, it can be very bad, you'll wind up in the hospital. Not a good time. A lot of people choose to wear leather aprons to kind of protect their body. Um, it also protects your clothes from getting burnt all the time. It's important to wear long pants and sturdy shoes as well. Those are the basic PPE that you're going to need all of the time. But under certain conditions, you might also want to wear a face shield, uh, leather gloves, ear protection, or even a good mask. All right, one of the tools that we're going to use is tongs. Tongs are what we use to hold the hot metal. Another thing that we'll use is hammers. Hammers are what we use to swing on them. Blacksmith's hammers look a little bit different than the hammers that you're used to, which is a claw hammer that has the backside for removing nails. Blacksmith's hammers often have like a cross peen or a straight peen, which is used for specific ways of shaping metal. A well-equipped blacksmith shop is going to end up having a lot of different sets of tongs and a lot of different hammers. Some of them smaller and some of them quite a bit large. Yep. The device is an important tool that we use for holding pieces of metal. It's used for twisting and bending. The anvil is basically a large chunk of steel that we're going to set the metal on and hammer on it. It's going to have a large flat surface for hammering on and a horn that we use for bending and shaping. Another really important thing is the water tub. When we're working with hot steel, we want to have a way that we can cool it off so we can safely touch it. The last and probably most important tool is the forge. This is a propane forge and it's uh, what we use to heat up the steel. It gets up to almost 3,000 degrees, which will definitely turn that steel into a puddle of liquid. And this is our shop cat. His name is Hephaestus. We named him after the Greek god of blacksmithing. Alright, you may have noticed this. This is basically just a magnet that I have here. What it does is it changes the resonant frequency of the anvil and makes the ring just a little bit quieter. What's attached to it is that scale that I was talking about, and this is really just rust formed under heat and pressure. All right, let's fire it up. So what I'm gonna do with this heat is demonstrate a technique called drawing a taper, basically forging it, making it coming to a point. Once the steel turns from that red color back to a gray, like a metallic color, that's when we know it's too cold and we need to stop and put it back in the forge. This next technique is called bending. I'm going to take the part, put it over the horn of the anvil, and use that to kind of create a curled shape. You can also take it up and put it back up on the face of the anvil to complete that curl.
For this next technique, I'm going to demonstrate a traditional way of cutting it off. I've got the hot cut in the anvil. I'm going to set the piece that I'm working on top of it and hammer down on it to cut that piece off. With this heat, I'm going to flatten this bar out into a flat piece. Twist is a technique that doesn't use the anvil or a hammer at all. You just, just put the part into the vise, grab it with our tongs, and twist it. Cool the part off, we use water bucket. And basically, just dunk it in. That noise that you're hearing is steam forming underwater from this piece of steel being very, very hot. Now, this quench that we're doing is just in water and it's just to cool it down. There are some specific oils that are used for hardening steel, but this is a low carbon steel that doesn't harden. Uh, tool steels and other steels like that are used um, with those oils for, for hardening. So once you've completed a piece, you want to preserve it so that it doesn't get rusty. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The traditional way of doing it would be oil blacking. So you take a blend of different oils and waxes, like beeswax and really just vegetable oil will do, and you put that onto the piece while it's still at kind of a, uh, a dull heat right about the time that it turns back to black. And you want to see how it goes on. If it's smoking like that, that tells you that it's a little bit too hot. So I'm going to let that cool down a bit and I'll keep applying it. What that does is that oil basically polymerizes on the steel and forms a protective barrier. This was a traditional way of preserving work. Another option that you have that's just as effective, much more modern, is taking a can of spray paint and just painting it. Right now this is too hot for the spray paint to actually stay on it, so I'll go over here where it's a little bit cooler and apply it there. Another technique that I'm not going to demonstrate today is forge welding. Forge welding is basically when you heat up one or two or more pieces of hot metal, uh, you press them together, get them right to their melting point and you get them to fuse together. This is an example of a piece of cable right here that was forge welded into one solid bar. Thank you for letting me show you some of the tools and techniques of blacksmithing. At this point, Miss Kay is gonna show you some of the finished products that can be made using these techniques. If you want more information, you can always look up some YouTube channels. I recommend Black Bear Forge. He shows traditional techniques. And if you wanna see some cool products being made, check out Alex Steele's channel.